Godot 4 brings the lovely new addition of Volumetric Fog that'll let you inject an incredible amount of ambience and Silent Hill-esque spookiness into your scenes. It is an addition to the world environment, so if you go into your world environment you'll see a check mark for Volumetric Fog. What this will do is it will add density as you get further away from the screen, and there are a lot of properties that let you control how this will look. After it's properly been enabled, you can control how much it will inject colour into the global illumination you're using, which if you're in Godot 4 will be stuff like SDFGI, and you can control both the colour of the fog and the emission of it. Once you've got that all set up, you can then add additional fog volume nodes, which is an entirely new kind of node in Godot 4 that will create an area of high density fog in a given area. So if you look at a scene like the one I have by default, you will see that we have fog in the environment around you, but we also have a layer of mist that stays closer to the ground. That's particularly cool. You can create uh, effects for its overall shape, so you can make it be a bit more like an ellipse, or you can make it be more cubic, and you can control its specific shape with a brand new resource which is a 3D texture, and that will allow you to make it appear more in specific areas. It also has effects for how it will appear as it gets higher up or lower down, and how it will fade towards the edges. But you can achieve some really cool effects. If you look at what I've got here, in the demo for Godot for Beginners, where I'm covering how volumetric fog interacts in the new beautiful Godot 4 environment. By default, I have a thick, bright blue fog around the entire area, and I have these spheres, which have shaders on them to give them a nice energy field effect, and a mist that hangs low to the ground. And when you walk in or out of one of these areas, the volumetric fog that surrounds our entire world will completely change. It will go to a thick, deserty, sandy yellow. And the reason that can change is because of a lovely thing called temporal reprojection. What that means is if the properties of the volumetric fog change, then it will take a certain amount of time to update from one state to the next, and you can control how much this lag and how much it persists as you're looking at it on the screen. You can get some really wacky effects if you change those effects and then just wave your head around and you can see the trails that get left behind. So that temporal reprojection is built in. So if you change the properties of your fog by going and getting your world environment, getting the environment on that and accessing its information, like its fog albedo, density, emission colour, that sort of stuff, you can change it and then in real time it will update because of those reprojection settings. Fog has been built into Godot previously, there was a general fog that was applied to the whole screen, but this now acts based on the depth of the view when you're looking in different directions, and it interacts with light, although I've struggled to get it looking good with that. It's really cool. Perhaps the coolest thing you can do is use an entirely new shader type that's been added in Godot 4, and that is the fog shader. This will let you control how light interacts with your shader. I have a strong feeling you'll be able to use it to create nice fog, smoky clouds around torches and the like. And one of the cool examples that was shown off when Godot 4 was uh, being announced and they were doing the blog post was they were using fog volumes as individual particles and then using the new particle collisions to influence the motion of fog throughout a scene. So this has been a brief introduction to the way fog volumes work in Godot 4. It's one of the many cool additions and something I'm covering in my new course, Godot for Beginners. This is a course designed to make it much easier for you to transition from Godot 3 to Godot 4. Or if you're just coming in for the first time, the aim is to have the course be a brilliant package to just get started with all the cool cutting edge new stuff in the engine. The course has been on sale for a first week and the sales have been good, so it's looking like I'm going to be able to keep this up for a reasonable amount of time just focusing on producing this kind of content and focusing on that course itself. There is a roadmap you can look at if you want to find out what's going to be added when, and when you buy it you get access to the source code for the demos, and the demos that you can play around in and see the new Godot effects in real time, and you also get access to the actual course that I'm writing. Uh, this is a Really exciting new venture for me, and I'm looking forward to spending a lot more time doing Godot 4 stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and see ya!